want to find the area of the surface obtained by rotating the curve y equals two x cubed from x equals zero to x equals two about the x-axis. So looking at this first graph, here we have y equals two x cubed. We're going to consider this graph on the interval from zero to two, where here's x equals two, and then rotate this about the x-axis, and then find the area of the surface. So if we rotate this curve, both the interval from zero to two about the x-axis, we'd have this blue surface here, and our goal is to find the area of this surface. Looking at our notes below, notice how we have two formulas here. This first is for the surface area of revolution for any horizontal axis, and here we have a second formula that's only about rotation about the x-axis. Let's first look at the most general formula. We have the surface area equals the integral from a to b of r of x times the square root of the quantity one plus the square of f prime of x integrated with respect to x, where r of x is the distance from the curve to the axis of rotation, which we can also think of as the radius function. Notice how the only difference between this formula and the formula for rotation about the x-axis is that r of x is equal to the function f of x. So going back over to our graph here, notice how the distance from the curve to the x-axis is this distance here, which would be r of x, which in our case though, because we have rotation about the x-axis, is the same as f of x. So notice how the given function is y equals two x cubed. So for our formula f of x equals two x cubed, We'll also have to find f prime of x. f prime of x is equal to six x squared. Which means the surface area is equal to two pi times the integral from zero to two of f of x, which is two x cubed, times the square root of the quantity one plus the square of f prime of x, which would be the square of six x squared, integrated with respect to x. Let's go ahead and simplify this. Let's first factor out the two. So we have four pi times the integral from zero to two of x cubed. And let's write the square root as a rational exponent. So we have the quantity one plus, this would be 36 x to the fourth, raised to the one half dx. Now let's evaluate this on the next slide. Notice how this requires u substitution, where we'd have u equals one plus 36 x to the fourth. So differential u is equal to the derivative of one plus 36 x to the fourth times dx, which would be zero plus, this would be 144 x to the third dx. Let's go ahead and divide both sides by 144. So we have one over 144 du equals x cubed dx. So we can think of all of this as, well again, x cubed dx is equal to one over 144 du, and this would be u to the one half. So we integrate, we're going to have four pi times We'll have one over 144. With respect to u, we'd have u to the three halves divided by three halves, or two thirds u to the three halves. So with respect to x, we'd have times two thirds times the quantity one plus 36 x to the fourth, raised to the power of three halves. Let's go ahead and clean this up. Four pi times one over 144 times two thirds is equal to pi divided by 54. So we're left with the quantity one plus 36 x to the fourth, raised to the power of three halves. Limits of integration are still from zero to two. Now we need to find big F of B minus big F of A. So we have pi divided by 54 times, when x is two, we'd have one plus 36 times two to the fourth, all raised to the three halves, minus when x is zero, we just have one to the three halves. So simplifying, we have pi divided by 54 times, this ends up being 577 raised to the three halves, minus one of the three halves is just one. 
So this would be the exact surface area, which would be square units. Let's also get a decimal approximation. We have pi divided by 54 times the quantity 577 raised to the power of 3 halves, or 3 divided by 2, right arrow, minus 1, close parenthesis, and enter. So to four decimal places, this is approximately 806.2848 square units. So we found the exact and approximate surface area of this surface here formed by rotating y equals two x cubed over the interval from zero to two about the x-axis. I hope you found this helpful.